Bill Teagans. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. Since last we met, the Cowboys have played four games, including a three-game trip to Hawaii, back home to take on Prairie View A&M, and coach that Hawaii trip. The weather was beautiful, but the games didn't turn out quite like we had hoped. I think all of the people that traveled with us had a marvelous time because the weather was excellent, and uh, uh, as far as the games were concerned, they weren't very good. Uh, we won one, lost two. Uh, Florida beat us five points. Clemson, I think, beat us uh, three. Uh, two good basketball teams, but we didn't play very well in the islands. And uh, I think it'll be a while before I take a team back over there. Patsy and I may go back with you and <laughs> your family or someone else, but I'm not sure I want to take a team back over there at Christmas time. But we got home after the trip, and we had a few days to really practice. And, and I felt like we made some progress uh, during that time. Uh, we're not in school now, so we've uh, been able to have double practices and also some film sessions. And uh, I felt like it gave us an opportunity to work with Bryant Reeves because probably uh, he, more than anyone else, uh, suffered uh, over in Hawaii. I think the team always suffers, but I think he especially suffered because he didn't play very well. And sometimes a player like that feels like, I've lost the game. And Bryant didn't lose those games. It's always a, a team that uh, they win it together, they lose it together. But we were able to work with him, and when we came back, uh, we played Prairie View A&M, and they're not the same caliber team that uh, you would see in Clemson or Florida, but he played much better. I thought he uh, was much more alert, and we're going to see uh, uh, some highlights of when we played Florida, and I think you'll see that he doesn't look like the player that we saw in our recent game or how he played earlier in the year. So we did get some good practice time in, and uh, then, of course, we'll talk later in the show about uh, Big 8, uh, the real season's here. We play the University of Oklahoma Saturday in Norman. So all of this work hopefully is uh, going to pay off. Again, the uh, Cowboys take on the Sooners, and we'll talk more about that. That's coming up on Saturday. But when we come back, we'll take a trip to sunny Florida as the Eddie Sutton Show continues. And welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. We're about ready to take you on a trip to Hawaii. Coach, the first opponent, the Florida Gators, and uh, Lon Kruger's got a nice ball club. He does have a nice ball club. Uh, earlier this week, uh, I think they beat LSU, another team that beat us by one point. I think the SEC might be down overall, but uh, I would think that Florida will be strong enough to be in the NCAA field at the end of the season. And again, we're underway right now. Brooks Thompson really played well out on the islands. He's played well for you all year, though. Brooks Thompson made the all-tournament team and certainly deserved that honor because uh, he had a, an outstanding tournament. Uh, he has played well. Uh, he, he's one of the best guards, not only in the Big 8. He's one of the best college guards, the way he's been playing in the nation. And uh, he's certainly done a lot of uh, good things for us that has allowed us to win the nine games that we have won. There he is hitting from outside. Let's talk a little bit about country. Uh, we, we've hit on it briefly, but he obviously struggled. It was uh, really difficult for him out there. Well, he was struggling some uh, before we ever got to the islands because uh, he did not play well at, at Arizona and then in New Orleans against LSU. Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I, I found out I've got a lot of assistant coaches across the country because I've gotten a lot of phone calls and, and a lot of letters advice, telling huh? me that what they think is wrong with him, but it, it, he, he's lost some confidence. There's no doubt that uh, that's part of the problem. But over there, he played 86 minutes and only had, I think, eight rebounds and 22 points. And that's not Bryant Reeves. He's a much better player than that. But as I said earlier in the show, uh, we saw some encouraging signs in practice earlier this week and then also in our game with Prairie View A&M. So I'm anxious to see how he's going to play down there in Norman on Saturday. I think he'll play well. Well, and you looked at the scoreboard, there was a 15-point game, the Cowboys down, but you rallied, played very well with some guys off the bench who came and did a great job for you. Well, there's a nice move by uh, Terry Collins. Uh, our bench uh, is developing. There's uh, Ian Phillip hitting a little uh, turnaround, uh, left-handed jump hook. He converts the free throw, and we displayed a lot of uh, fight, a lot of determination, a lot of character the way we did fight back in this ball game, and put ourselves in a position actually to win it and uh, just couldn't get uh, the break that we needed to get over the top. That's a good driving uh, layup by uh, Randy Rutherford. Uh, he hit the basket. Now he goes to the line to uh, complete the three-point play, and here you get a look at the defensive man. Moves over after Randy is airborne, and once a, a player's off his feet going to the basket, he's allowed to come to the floor, so that is a blocking foul. And you can see now it's a one-point game, and 
Here's a big play right here, Coach. Well, it was a big play because we worked hard to get it to Bryant. He just left the ball short, and you'll see uh, instead of going up, I believe we were up one point at the time. We Now they're back in the lead. Hill doesn't look like a basketball player, but uh, he certainly had a great uh, tournament. I think he's about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, but he weighs about 290 pounds. He looked more like a football player. And he did a good job. And Brown hits that three-pointer over in the corner, and that was really damaging. There you see Hill uh, throw, threw up a bad shot, but uh, their center was there to, to tip it in. You know, all of these games, you talk about uh, the fact you lost two out of three. You mentioned the point differential. These games easily could have been won by the Cowboys. I mean, they were that Well, good. again, I don't want if Bryant plays just a normal game, you're going to win the, the, the ball game because I think our defense was good enough. Uh, the one area maybe outside of Bryant not playing as well uh, was our defensive board play. It was uh, something that uh, we need to correct, and uh, I hope we can. And the Cowboys go uh, one and two in the islands, but it's nice to get back home and uh, obviously back at Gallagher Eye, but we haven't been there very often this year. No, we haven't been there, and uh, I think we've played 13 games, and we've only been in Stillwater in our home arena four times. Uh, believe me, we're not going to have a schedule like that in the future. We'll play a few more games during the month of November and December here in Stillwater on our campus. Well, here we are against Prairie View A&M just the other night. This was, a, this was a good opportunity for you guys to get everybody into action, and uh, I think most everybody played well. It's Fred Burley hitting the first basket of the game on the baseline. Uh, everyone did play. Uh, it's a game where you can build your confidence because, as I mentioned, Prairie View A&M has struggled. I believe they've only won one game all season long. They are a Division I team. It's a good uh, look at what we try to do when we come down on, on, a, on a break. Brendan Manzer almost handcuffs Bryant there. One thing uh, young players might be watching, don't take your eyes off the basket. If you think one of your teammates going up for a shot, make sure he shoots it because he may be passing to you and may hit you in the head, and that's what <laughs> almost happened there. But you can see 20 to four, that's her first field goal of, of the game. Nice pass by Scott Pierce into Ian Phillip, and I thought both those guys played pretty well. Uh, Terry Collins missed that layup, but Pierce was there to tip it in. We come down a break, and that's Manzer hitting a jump shot. We want to spot up if we can run at three-point line if you're a three-point shooter. And uh, in this ball game, I thought we did an excellent job. We shot, uh, I guess, 11 out of 18 from three-point range. We shot. 61% as a team for the ball game. Brooks hit five of those three-pointers. Keontae, I think, had a couple, and here's some great defense Good by Brooks. Good defensive play by Brooks. That's one of the areas I think he's gotten better. He's a better defender, and he certainly does a better job as far as uh, uh, making good judgments when it comes to passing the basketball. And there it's halftime, and I think we're up 58 uh, to 17. 17. That's a big uh, margin. They only had uh, 25 uh, 26 points, I guess, with about six and a half to go in the game, and we were playing some of our younger players, and uh, they made some mistakes, and they ended up getting 51 for the game. We got 113. Uh, we talked about Brian Reeves a moment ago. He looked much more aggressive. Much quicker, much more alert, much more aggressive and uh, than what we saw in the islands, and that's what we had seen in practice the day before, and, and uh, we all know he can play, and players go through slumps. We hope that he is uh, completely out of his. I talked to his parents after the game the other night and Bryant feels good about himself. He feels like that uh, he's back uh, on uh, close to where he was. But I talked to his mom and dad and they were thrilled because parents struggle along with their children when uh, they're having adversity like he's he's had here recently. In the Cowboy defense forcing another turnover. Randy with an easy bucket here. We forced him into 22 turnovers in the ball game, and and uh, you'd, you'd like to see that every every time. Now we've seen that before earlier in the year, but we didn't see any of that uh, when we played uh, Cal Santa Barbara, Florida, or Clemson over in Honolulu. There's One thing about that through. trip to uh, Hawaii, when I say I don't know what I'd take a team back over, there, I'll take a team back over there. But it is really an educational experience. You know, we got to they got to play out on a beach and do some sightseeing the first two days before we started playing and then uh, once that started it was all business. Uh, then before we departed for home we uh, were able to take them up to a pineapple plantation and a sugar cane, cane plantation and up to the north shore there in Oahu and uh, where they have the big surf right. board uh, festivals or uh, con uh, competition 
and we saw some what 12 14 foot waves yeah, biggest waves out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get out there. No, I wouldn't either. You know, what do you look at the psyche of your team now? The the, the mental frame of mind as you as you get into the Big 8 play coming up. Well, you've heard me say this before. You play games in November and December if you don't start your conference just really to prepare yourself and to uh, see what you need to work on in uh, preparation for Big 8 play. Uh, I think fans and players alike, the intensity l level really rises when you get to, to Big 8 play. I think that will be very evident when uh, we play uh, OU on Saturday. Uh, our team was down, Bill, because I really think they, they believe that maybe a couple of the games that we lost were a better team. And, and you judge ball clubs if you had to play a series. In college basketball or high school basketball uh, or even the pros, if you play one game, anything can happen. But if you played a series, uh, if you are a better team, you probably would win out. We feel like that maybe we uh, a couple of those games we lost, we should have won. We're a better ball club. And I think that, that hurts you. I think all of us were concerned about Bryant Reeves. Uh, but right now, uh, getting ready for the game Saturday, I think we're really in a uh, good frame of mind. I, I really believe we'll go down there and, and play well uh, at OU on Saturday. At least I hope we do. Well, the Cowboys are 9-4 and four right now. We'll be back to talk about the Big 8 and a special off-the-court feature, some of the men behind the scenes who help make the Cowboy program what it is. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, winning on the Division I level is really a team effort. There are a lot of people involved in that. In an off-the-court feature today, Tom Dorado takes a look at some of those important people behind the scenes. <laughs> They are the unsung heroes who work behind the scenes of every major college basketball program. They put in long hours. Their duties are diverse. They are dedicated and enthusiastic. They are the student managers. Oklahoma State has had a top-notch managerial staff for a number of years, and this season is no different. Head manager Jimmy Nichols, like others before him, learned on the job. He was ready to take over in 93-94. This is my fourth year doing it and it's my first year to be in charge and I've learned that uh, I still didn't know a lot of things I thought I knew. Ron Arthur, who was before me, did a great job and he taught us all a lot and if it wasn't for him I'd be lost, I'll tell you that. Like the student athletes, the managers must also balance their time between classes and work. TD, I guess we put in uh, a week, we probably put in 40 hours a week, I guess, about about five, five to six hours a day, give or take. Pretty Some days tough. more. Pretty tough working it around school. Well, at first, the first year I did it, it was definitely difficult on me. My grades dropped a little bit and uh, definitely dropped a few hours, but over time it's become a lot easier. And uh, This is a close-knit group and that obviously makes the job that much more enjoyable. Yeah, we get along. We, that's, one, that's one great thing about it. If we didn't get along, I don't think we'd all be able to stand it. Spend so much time up here and so much time together, it uh, would be very difficult. And, uh, but we all get along. Rusty, Doug, we've all been together for a while. We're good friends. I live with Doug, so i got to put up with him. Uh, we get along good with Lane and, and Pat and Rand. It's small family is really what it is. Most student managers played basketball in high school. This job is a way they can stay close to the sport they love. Uh, I played for 4A school in Tulsa and uh, we had quite a big success and everything but th there's no way I could have gone to this level and uh, uh, Rusty, Rusty probably could. He's a good enough shooter if he's a little bigger. His coach said yesterday he'd be a major, major college basketball player. Doug's pretty good. Doug went to Seminole, played, played basketball in Seminole and yeah this is as close as we'll get to it that's does for sure. It, does it satisfy the appetite knowing that you can't play out there but you're that close to being out on the court but you're that close to being weak? Yeah I think we all just love the game so much. I don't think we'd do it if we didn't love the game so much. You're up here so much and and uh, we all love the game. Rusty and Doug both plan to be coaches and being working for a guy like Coach Sutton they've learned a lot and uh, it's an experience you couldn't trade. No matter how long the hours may get or how demanding the job may become they know they are part of a big family, and that makes it all worthwhile. That's the neat thing about it. A lot of people ask me, you know, how you're treated by the players and everything, and I think it's safe to say a, a lot of the players are some of my closest friends. I think Doug and Rusty could both say the same thing. I mean, we live with Scott Sutton as well, me and Doug do, and uh, a lot of players come over all the time. We hang out. We all go out together, and uh, it's, it's not only are we a small little family, but the whole team, the coaching staff, and, and everybody. 
I think, although we're not players, I think we're included in, in that group. It's really special, I, I think. You know, Bill, no successful athletic team can do well without a group of young men like we have. And uh, we've been very fortunate since I came back to Oklahoma State to have just a tremendous uh, managerial core. Uh, those guys wash clothes, they uh, shag balls, throw them back to the players, they chart the sh shots, they film. Uh, I mean, they sweep the floor. Uh, they, they do a lot of work, but they have a lot of fun, too, because one of the, the neat things, uh, they get to come out before practice and play a little bit on their own. They still have some of that in them. And then at the end, when they practice is over, they lower one of the baskets down to about seven and a half feet so they all can dunk the <laughs> ball, so they all pretend like they're centers. But uh, they do a great job just being around our players, and they are part of our family, and that's the way we treat them. And, and we're very indebted to all the hard work that they put in. And I know our players appreciate what they do. Well, I I'm, I'm, can see that for a fact because on the road, I'll tell you what, these guys work as hard on the road as they do at home. Obviously, the Big 8 season is coming up. That's our focus when we come back right here on the Eddie Sutton Show. And welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Coach, the real season, as we've said, for uh, Oklahoma State begins this weekend, but the Big 8 season's already underway for a couple of teams. Well, Nebraska went to Ames the other night and de defeated the Cyclones and broke that 22-game winning streak, and uh, I was really impressed with Danny Nee's ball club. I thought Nebraska really played well in that particular game, but you look at those records on the right, you can see, uh, once again, the Big 8 is one of the power conferences in the country. Kansas is playing better than anyone else. Colorado maybe not playing as well as some of the other teams. And in between, there are six teams, including our ball club, that probably are playing about the same. Missouri won a very impressive game uh, last evening against Southern Illinois and Carbondale. They had struggled earlier, and Arkansas had beaten them, but that's the only game they've lost since that time. They've gone, they've won nine straight ball games. Kansas State is a little bit of a surprise at 10-1. and one. Uh, Oklahoma, the team we're playing, I really believe that uh, they have really played well. They've lost two games to two good basketball teams, uh, Texas and Austin, and uh, at home against the University of Massachusetts. So with the real season starting, it should be uh, a lot of fun times for all of the fans that follow Big 8 basketball. And you can see this weekend, Colorado is at Nebraska. Uh, we're down at Oklahoma in the second game with that doubleheader on television. Uh, then Kansas State is at Missouri that night, and SMU plays Kansas for the second time. They played in their tournament just about a That's week right. ago. Uh, then on Monday, the University of Oklahoma travels to Lawrence to play the Jayhawks, and we play our last non-conference game here in Gallagher, Iowa, on Monday evening against West Texas A&M. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Oklahoma Sooners. You know, before the season, Billy Tubbs had talked about his ball club and and uh, kind of downplayed the <coughs> fact that his team might, might not be too good, but they are, as you mentioned, off to a good start at 8-2. and two. I think that uh, they've really done an excellent job in coaching their ball club. I always think they do. Uh, when you play the University of Oklahoma, I always think the Sooners play hard, and, uh, and you know you're going to be in for a war, especially if you're coaching at Oklahoma State. <laughs> I think the intensity is always a little higher when those two schools get together. But Jeff Webster is playing all, like an all-Big 8 performer. He just uh, really has lit it up. He scored 35 points the other night against Baylor. He was the MVP in the all-college tournament. Uh, Ryan Miner, uh, a young man we try to recruit. I think he's a terrific basketball player, just a sophomore, but he's one of the top players in the Big Eight. And those two guys have really been scoring big points for them. I think they both average uh, over 20 points a game. Uh, Conley is a senior and a very experienced uh, player inside. He's had some problems, some injuries, but a uh, very good player. He, uh, I, I think they brought him some junior college players. Uh, uh, Anthes, Anches is one of them. And uh, uh, then they brought in uh, Curry, a, a very good shooter out of a junior college on the West Coast. So what Coach Tubbs has, he has very good inside players, but he also has good perimeter players. And as I said, they play hard, they play excellent defense. And uh, they're 8-2, and two, and they, they have a chance. Uh, you know, Kansas right now, even though they, we were picked to win the Big Eight. I, I really believe in November, December, Kansas played better than anyone. They've only lost one time. But uh, the game Saturday with the University of Oklahoma should be a real war. 
I know it's a game that uh, everybody's looking forward to. All basketball fans around the Big 8 Conference. It's unusual to open the uh, Big 8 season against Oklahoma, but I know in talking to the players after the game uh, the other night, the Cowboys are ready to go, and we're looking forward to it. And, uh, hey, it's time to play real basketball. That's right. It's, uh, it's January, and it's time for conference play. Well, we look forward to seeing you again next week. For Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Tiggins. We'll see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.